Daniel at the assessment toolbox here. We are adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators. This video focuses on how to make your denominators the same or how to find a common denominator. So first off, what is a denominator? Well, the denominator is the bottom number of a fraction. I want to pull this guy down here so you can see how it's spelled. That's the word denominator. And we have a denominator right here, this digit on the bottom. Six is a denominator as well as nine. Well, how about the number on top? That's called a numerator. That's how it's spelled. So we have two numerators here because we have two fractions. Our first one right here, we've got a numerator of two and a numerator of three. Now, before we solve this, I want to give you a math tip that I noticed over years of teaching math. Skilled mathematicians don't usually solve the hardest problem. They find a way to solve a simpler problem with the same result. So, as you look at this problem right here, before we even add this, can you think of a way to make this problem simpler before we even solve it? Reduce. The key here is making numbers small as early as we can. If we can reduce before we even add, subtract, multiply, or divide, that is the best. So let's reduce these. This video will not be in depth on how to reduce, but if you need a full video on that, leave a comment asking for it. So we have 3 ninths plus 2 sixths. Here is why we reduce as early as possible and why that's so valuable. If you just jumped into using the technique I'll show you soon of multiplying the denominators together, in this case 9 times 6, you would multiply 9 by 6 to get 54. Instead, we reduce first. So I'm going to take this fraction here, 3 ninths, and write an equivalent version that's reduced. 3 ninths, I'm thinking about what number multiplies into both of these, or what number divides out of both of those that I can reduce by. And I see that 3 multiplies into 3 and into 9. So I'm just going to do this quickly. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 1 third is an equivalent fraction that I can substitute in for 3 ninths. Next, 2 sixths needs to be reduced. Let's find an equivalent fraction that's smaller than 2 sixths. And again, I'm looking for what number I can divide out of both of those or that multiplies into both of those. And I see that 2 multiplies into 2 and 6. So I'll divide both of them by 2. 2 divided by 2 equals 1. And 6 divided by 2 equals 3. So 1 third is an equivalent fraction that I can substitute in for 2 sixths. So rewritten with the reduced versions down below, one third plus one third, not so bad. That equals two thirds. I want to show you a side by side comparison of what it would look like with the other version. If you had multiplied the denominators at the very start, like I'm going to show you nine times six, that would become this. So if you reduce first, you get one third plus one third. If you choose to go the multiplying first route, you'd have 1856 plus 1856. Which one would you rather solve? The good news is both will get you to the right spot, but 3656 is so much larger and harder to work with, and you're gonna have to reduce it anyway at the end, and it's going to reduce to two thirds. So why not reduce at the start if you can? So that's my first key to solving. Number one, reduce. At the start of the problem, or AEAP, which stands for as early as possible. If your problem can reduce, you'll have to reduce at the end anyway, so why not do it at the start? This keeps the numbers small and helps you solve the simpler problem. So here's my second key to solving. List multiples of the denominators. Multiples are the numbers we get when multiplying by 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. It's also the same as repeated addition. So remember our goal when we're adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators. We need the same denominator. These two values here have to become the same number before we can combine or subtract. So another way to say that is common or shared denominators. Common just means shared. 
And here is the final part. To keep it simple, we keep numbers small. So we don't want to find any shared denominator, any number that would work to transform 6 and 9 into. We want the least common denominator, or LCD. Maybe you've seen that acronym before. And I'll ask you to pause this video and explain what a least common denominator is in your head before we go on. So in this problem that we've been looking at of 3 ninths plus 2 six, let's look at what we get when we list multiples of our denominators to find a small one. And we'll say we forgot our first key of reducing first. We can make a list like this. I'm just counting by nines here. We've got 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, and I'll pause there. We do the same with our other denominator of six. We're counting by sixes, we're finding multiples of six. Six, 12, 18, 24, 36, and that's enough for now. Since we're looking for a shared or common denominator, do you see any numbers that appear on both lists? I see 18 and 36. We just found that 18 and 36 are both shared denominators that we could use to solve this problem. But which one do we want to use? Either one can get us to the correct solution, but the smaller one, in this case 18, should be easier to work with. So we're gonna use 18 as a denominator. So I'm gonna rewrite the problem down here. 3 ninths plus 2 sixths. And we're gonna transform them so that they both have a denominator of 18. So let's first find an equivalent fraction for 3 ninths that has a denominator of 18. Well, if I start at nine and I need to get to 18, how could I do that? Or how many nines are in 18? Two. So we multiply nine by two to get 18. But to maintain balance in the fraction, to make an equivalent fraction with the same value, we have to do the same to the top. So we multiply three by two. Three by two is six. Six eighteenths is our equivalent fraction. Now we do the same for two sixths. We need an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 18. Well, if I start at six, how could I get to 18? Or how many sixes are in 18? Three. But what we do to the bottom, we do to the top. Two times three is six, six eighteenths. So six eighteenths is an equivalent fraction for two sixths that we can plug into our equation. Now that all of our fractions have the same denominator, we can add normally. 6 eighteenths plus 6 eighteenths is 12 eighteenths. Let's say you now remember to reduce. Can you reduce it? Yes. 6 can be divided out of both. So 12 eighteenths reduces to 2 thirds. Notice how this one had more steps and was longer. Why? Because you didn't reduce AEAP or as early as possible. But you still found the correct solution. Good job. So let's put up our key to solving number two. Listing multiples is a great way to find a shared denominator and it can get you some small ones as well. And you can create a list of multiples that looks like this. And then you find which values appear on both lists. Now there's one last way I want to show. I saved it for last for this reason. It will always get you a common denominator, but not always the least common denominator. I've seen so many students use only this method and make so much more work for themselves, they think they're saving time by rushing. But they are more likely to get the problem wrong because they're solving a harder version of the problem. But here's key number three. Multiply the denominators to find a common denominator. 
If we multiply our denominators, in this case 9 and 6, we will find a number that they both fit into. That makes sense. We multiply those to create a larger number, and they both multiply into it. In this case, we would have a new denominator of 54. So let's go ahead and solve this. Our denominator needs to become 54 in both fractions, so that they're equivalent and they can be added. So if I start at 9 with my denominator, how could I get to 54? Well, we did 9 times 6, so I'm going to multiply both parts of this by 6. 9 times 6 is 54. What we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 3 times 6 is 18. And now we need 2 6 to have a denominator of 54. So we write an equivalent fraction. 6 times 9 got us to 54. And so we do the same to the top. And I'm writing this a few different ways. You're going to see it a different way depending on how your teacher shows it or how your textbook shows it. And they're all doing the same thing, showing it a slightly different way. So I wanted you to see a few ways. 2 times 9 is 18. Now here's our equivalent fraction, 18 fifty-fourths. So we can add, like normally, straight across on the top. 18 plus 18 is 36 over our denominator of 54. Remember how our first example of reducing first used a denominator of 3. Our second example of listing multiples used 18 or 36. This third way of multiplying denominators used 54. Did all work? Yes. Were some ways harder? Yes. We have some big reducing to do before we get to our final solution. And having these different ways to solve it is like Sticky here. Sticky wants to get to this rock. There's a few ways Sticky could do it. He could take this path. He could take this path. Or he could take this path. Now, did all the ways get Sticky to the rock? Yes. Were they all the same length? No. Were some ways easier or shorter? Yes. And that's a main message I want you to remember about these methods. While multiplying your denominators to find a shared denominator will always work, it won't always give you the smallest one. But the good news is it will work even if you can't reduce or finding multiples would mean creating a very long list. So now that you've been through all of those steps with me, I want to give you two more examples. Whenever you feel ready to solve problems like this, just go for it. But if you would benefit from seeing it again, here we go. All right, thanks for sticking with me. We have 3 sevenths plus 4 twelfths. Do you remember our first step? We're going to check if we can reduce. 3 sevenths does not reduce. 4 twelfths? It does, so I need an equivalent fraction that's smaller, what numbers multiply into both that I could pull out of or divide out of. It's going to be 4. I can multiply 4 out of both of those and get a whole number answer. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, 12 divided by 4 is 3, voila, I'm going to substitute 1 third in as a smaller equivalent fraction. 3 sevenths plus 1 third. Alright, I could list multiples of both of these guys or I could just multiply them together. Since I've already reduced, I'm going to try multiplying them together. My new denominator is going to be 7 times 3, or 21. So I'm going to rewrite 3 sevenths with a denominator of 21. And we got there by multiplying by 3, our other denominator. So 7 times 3 is 21. We do the same to the top. 3 times 3 is 9. This is an equivalent fraction for 3 sevenths. Now we need an equivalent fraction for 1 third. 1 third becoming over denominator 21. We got there by multiplying our other denominator 7. So 3 times 7 is 21. 1 times 7 is 7 because you do the same to the top to make that equivalent. 7 over 21. 
Now that we have equivalent denominators, we can add it straight across. 9 plus 7, 16 over our denominator of 21. Great work. One final example. Let's try 1 8 plus 5 6. Can we reduce? Hmm. No. Writing out multiples of 8 and then multiples of 6. Well, 8. 16, 24, 32, let's try 6, 12, 18, it's close, not quite. Hey, 24, let's do it. In this case, if I'd multiplied 8 times 6, I would end up with a denominator of 48. And would that work? Yes. But would that be like sticky, taking the long way to get there? Yeah, it would. There's a shorter way. So I'm going to use a denominator of 24. 1 8 with a denominator of 24. Well, if I start at 8, how many 8's in 24? 3. So I multiply top and bottom by 3. 1 times 3. 3 over 24. Let's do the same for over here. We need this denominator to become 24. I'm starting at 5 sixths. How many sixes are in 24? Well, four. So I multiply top and bottom by four. That gives me five times four on top, which is 20. So I've got 20 over 24 as my equivalent fraction to five sixths. Now we've got the same denominator here. We can add them up. Three plus 20 over our denominator of 24. Bravo, everybody. We did a lot. Look at all that work. There's Sticky. There's our examples. And here's our reminders down here. Reduce. List multiples or multiply denominators. See if you can make it smaller first. But multiplying denominators will always work. Hey, you did a great job today. If this was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up. So glad you stuck around, and I think you are ready to dominate some problems dealing with adding or subtracting fractions when they've got different denominators. Great work.